Hello friends, welcome to another medical lecture by All in Law team. Today we are going to talk about pterygium. Pterygium is a very common condition, especially in hot and uh, warm temperatures as like uh, Asian countries. And uh, this is something which is very obvious on examination with torchlight and uh, this can be kept as a case in the examinations. What is pterygium? Pterygium is one of a degenerative condition of the conjunctiva. As you all know, conjunctiva is a transparent uh, membrane overlying the sclera which ends at the limbus. It is uh, highline infiltration and the elastotic degeneration of the connective tissue of the conjunctiva. There is a fibrovascular proliferation. You can see some fibrous tissue which is white in color and some blood vessels uh, which are encroaching onto the cornea. It causes damage to the Bowman's layer which is the second layer of the cornea leading to the corneal opacity. As I told this is very common in Asia and Asian countries obviously because of the excessive exposure to the hot windy dusty environment chronic ultraviolet light exposure has been considered to be one of the major risk factor obviously the interpalpebral area that is the area of the conjunctiva between the upper and the lower lid uh, is exposed to the uv light and it has been shown to be more common on the nasal side compared to the temporal side what are the symptoms of pterygium the most common presentation is a cosmetic concern patients may notice some fleshy growth which is coming on to their cornea which is a transparent structure in case if there is a recurrent inflammation they can present with recurrent redness of the eye with discomfort and watering pterygium can cause blurring of vision as well not all patients will have blurring of vision it's only when the pterygium is quite advanced it can cause blurring of vision the main reasons for blurring of vision are either astigmatism which is irregular astigmatism because of the change in the curvature of the cornea because of the fibrous tissue growing or secondly sometimes if the growth is coming into the visual axis it can cause blurring of vision and sometimes it can lead to the complete loss of vision as well when you examine you will see a growth on the nasal or the temporal side of the cornea this does have an apex which is closer to the cornea and then is the body which is on the conjunctiva once there is a pterygium the surface of the cornea is not very regular hence the tear film gets disturbed this can cause deposition of the iron in front of the apex of the pterygium which is called as stoker's line it is very easy to diagnose pterygium based on the clinical presentation the main differential diagnosis for pterygium are either a carcinoma in C2 of the conjunctiva or sometimes obvious carcinoma of the conjunctiva or pseudoterygium where you may see something like this a fibrovascular proliferation but this is not very typically seen in the interpalpable area and there will be history of some chemical injury or anything like that and uh, obviously the examination will help to differentiate uh, it from pterygium you can see some cyanake or the adhesions called as uh, uh, simblepharon. What are the treatment options? The most commonly done thing is to leave it because it tends to become atrophic over a period of time and does not progress and cause any problem with the vision. So if the patient is asymptomatic, no problem with the vision, best thing is to leave it, avoid exposure to the UV light with the use of sunglasses if there is a discomfort in the eye advise to use some lubricating drops if there is inflammation redness then treat it with topical steroids for a few days coming to the definitive treatment the definitive treatment is doing a surgery 
so the indication for the surgery is if the pterygium is at risk of involving the pupillary area then you need to take it out or secondly if it is causing very irregular astigmatism and causing the vision of the patient to be blurred what are the surgical options we have in the management of pterygium as the most important thing is the excision of pterygium the excision of the pterygium can be combined with doing a conjunctival autograft where you take the conjunctiva from the other part of the con conjunctiva of the same eye or the other eye and then do the transplantation or sometimes you can use an amniotic membrane graft to cover the area we can use mitomycin c that is mmc as an adjunct to prevent the recurrence the most common problem that you come across doing a surgery for pterygium is risk of recurrence and sometimes the risk recurrence can be more worse than the presentation so surgical management of the pterygium needs a very good assessment and a good discussion with the patient about the risk of recurrence once again thanks a lot for watching this presentation we hope you like the presentations we appreciate your feedbacks and comments we strongly believe in sharing our knowledge with you all for the benefit of the whole humanity once again thanks a lot from all and lot team